I think this is working? Potentially? Let's see. Yes, I think this is actually working now. Oh, there. Okay, I just go through manage. Oh. Oh. Okay, I understand. All right. Let's do this. So, six ages. Uh, lights going out. This is basically uh, Warhammer Fantasy uh, End Times. Uh, the two settings have a lot in common, sharing like roots during their creation. A lot of chaos and stuff like that. Beast men overlap. So it's pretty interesting seeing all that. Uh, I've never played either of these. Those were two things I did to get pictures. Let's start anew. So, there's this is like the sequel to another game, and in the original one, uh, you basically like build a uh, settlement of people, faithful people, worshipping various gods, right? And uh, your dudes do shit like, like uh, throwing javelins and surfing on them and chopping off other dudes' heads, and there's a lot of crazy shit going on there, like um, half-tree people. And things like that, things of that nature. A lot of the common tropes in fantasy in this are not what you might expect. Um, however, uh, there's actually like Mass Effect style carryover. So if you play the first one, you can bring your save game into this. And I, 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 I've heard that that changes a lot of like events and outcomes and such. I've not finished the first one, so we're just going to jump into this. Alright, which god did we favor at the, the peak of the Golden Age? Oh, I don't know. Would we, would we do the main sun god? Or the earth mother? We're gonna do the sun god. Alright, the Golden Age ended when the storm god Umath forced his way down into the world through a flaw in the sky dome. The firmament. Uh, constantly moving and violent. This dude rebelled against our sun god. Our sun god's sons sent Umoth into the sun. So basically, this kind of just decides what our clan's good with. And uh, I'm gonna say our people... We have to survive the end of the world. The whole world is collapsing. Uh, we have to rebuild it, possibly. Kind of makes it a little bit like Age of Sigmar. Not that I've read too much on that, but from what I understand, very similar. I think battle's always good, especially if the world's ending. Like stout shield would be good. The Battle of Akashar, when shining Elmal, that's a son of Yelm, um, saw through the stratagems of the Changer. What the heck, the Changer? Zinch, perhaps. Umath's son, Orlanth, challenged Emperor Yelm's stale rule. Taste a little... I mean, rules taste a little stale, sorry. Armed with the new power of death, he slew Yelm, sending his light to the underworld. When the sun fell from the sky, the empire fell apart. Smaller suns lit the world in Yelm's place. Darkness, storm, and water gods threatened. An axial, the sailor refounded the empire after it was flooded. Oh yeah, this is this this I love this. So uh, this is the founding myth of our people. We're riders not because like, you know, it's not like Pegasus exists because they're horses with wings. Horses exist because some dude ripped the wings off of <laughs> some Pegasus. And it was just from then on, it was like Lamarckian evolution. They never had wings again. <laughs> this dude's just eating it. I think that's a troll. Many more gods died as the gods war worsened. Hyalor of Nibera found the crippled spirit who had once been the winged fanged hippogriff. He saved her from death and made an alliance. Hyalor gave her a new name, Gomari, and she allowed him to ride. 
Hylor returned to your ancestors with the secret. They became the first riders. And that's where the first game kind of comes in, is you're fleeing this, this global freezing, this ice sheet that's coming down from the north, trying to form a, a kingdom. So yeah, it comes down, it uh, kills volcano gods, and just kept going and going. The Emperor built an immense dome to hide under. Rather than cower inside, the citizens of Nivera chose to move away. Our ancestors trained horses for riding. Others drove chariots. Everyone left the city forever and made a new home in the south. Our clan grew and prospered, dividing and migrating again and again and again. Uh, until we came up against Orlanth worshippers. Uh, all the while, the gods continued to the fight, and the world grew colder and darker. So this this now goes back into the first game. You can have a child, and they can just die. So I, I, I gotta wonder. So I guess in the default canon, they live, and they they fall for the Orlanthi. So there's this whole Romeo and Juliet event that can play out. And so I guess that's that's canon in this, is that they uh, kind of reunite and find friendship. Uh, so they ride to the other side, the like the realm of the gods. So the riders gain the power of the storm, and they learn, and the Orlanthi learn to ride. That's kind of cool. Many of our former kin considered us traitors. Your own folk found it confusing to worship the Earth Goddess under the name Arnalda instead of her rider name, Nyalda. Yeah, that's so confusing. Nyalda, Arnalda, I just can't keep these things straight. Come on. Rodalda appeased these ancestral spirits of her husband's clan by pledging to uphold always the rider virtue of... Lusty feasting? <laughs> lusty feasting? Finding the truth, that's just gonna get you shot. Uh, we'll do Ferocity. We never refuse to fight, so we gotta remember that. What the hell we got? Are these- these are, I think, dwarves. Maybe. Baron and Ronaldo lived longer than most and assumed rule of her tribe. Okay, now, now, now I get it. It's a little confusing, maybe. Known as the Baron Theli. The height of their power, King Baron and Queen Ronaldo built the mighty fortress where our clan still lives. Baronstead. Conquer dwarves fashion as well. Those are dwarves. See, they're like, they're actually like kind of made out of stone and they have like mechanical automata. Pretty cool. They installed wards to protect it from a foe chosen by Rodalda. Who did we pick? Dwarves built wards to ward against dwarves. That'd be funny. Hmm. Why would we do sun... I think floods and earthquakes might be a good idea to keep the wards off of if the world's blowing up. Could be trolls too. It's always good to get trolls out of the way. No more trolls. Oh, okay, yeah, this is gonna be our ancient enemy. The wards will fall and the trolls will come. I see, I see how this is. I get it. Alright. The Storm Mage slowly slipped into the great darkness. Treachery, betrayal, and emptiness re-entered the world and tried to destroy it. The worst chaos gods, the unholy trio, I guess Slaanesh was never born, gave birth to the Wakboth. What is this now? Wakfu? Lord of Chaos. His chaos army marched from the north. Chaos Lords. Baron and Rodaldo rode forth to face it, joining Orlanthi heroes from other tribes. How did Baron choose to fight? It was Rinaldo. No. With with hmm, we are ferocious, but I always like doing magic in this game, because magic's cool. It's chaos. This is like the war against chaos. Magic. Baron directed Elmal's blazingly intense fire at the foe. We thank him for the chaos things that we do not know because he destroyed them that day. <laughs> but Baron could not defeat an entire horde. As hero after hero fell, Orlanth called for a retreat. 
The sword god Humacht and his surviving few champions stood for him, while the rest of the army escaped. It was called the Battle of Stormfold. It was only the first defeat, and not even the worst. Oh, man. Wokboth's Chaos Army marched on the Storm Tribe's fort and defeated Humacht and Orlanth. Chaos Gods ransacked the fort and destroyed the great mountain it stood on, the spike at the center of all creation. The explosion was of a million avalanches caving inward, each upon each other. It was so strong that the whole mountain was ground into dust. Damn. I need to take this as my... my thumbnail picture. That's way better. The explosion was of a million avalanches caving inward and upward. Damn, dude, the escaping storm gods blew this dust across the whole world. Damn, dude. The few survivors let return to Berenstead and led the tribe through an endless gloom. Life would be. About as bad as you'd expect. You probably won't starve right away. Divinations revealed that no matter how tenaciously you survive, the world would soon end. No one really knows how long you have. Your clan would hold off the darkness as long as you could. Iron Man mode. Life would be bad. The end of the world approaches. Chaos devours all. The people of Berenstead, heirs of the Star Dancer clan, don't know it. They have a chance. Not to stop the ultimate destruction. That is inevitable. Games Workshop has made up its mind. A new game line is coming. But if they fashion a strong strand, combining practical resources and cosmic values. They can help remake the world after it dies. Small decisions the leaders of Berenstead make from season to season may determine all. With value should their stand begin with. Let's think here. The world is ending. I think hope's pretty strong. Selflessness does not sound good. Insight. Finding things out. Actually. The nature of things might help us to work. Let's do insight. If they survive, they will meet me. If they have well prepared, they will embody my secret against walk both the devil and his dread gods of chaos. Who? There's a secret to destroy Walk both. King Vinglanth, the great grandson of Baron and Redalda, lost the tribal regalia in his life, fighting cannibals at the Blood Feast battle. Life's getting bad. Look at these guys. This is what I'm talking about. They're just like fucking flying around. Pretty, pretty cool. They're just, that's how magic works. His brother Bro, Bro his, his heir, Brolarulf, the son, became the king of our tribe. That's the most powerful king. Oh, there he is. Renowned readership and excellent comment. His natural, he would call for unity. When they relate, refused, he launched a raid to make an example of one of them. The wheels, the riders... Orlanthi, Vistanti, the Summer Tribes. Choose our foes with care. Chariot people, I mean.
Yeah, chariot wheels. Alright, so we have to deal with wheel tribes a little bit. Now, what about that elf thing? There's like a... It's very, like, 1E-ish, but there's a... There's a... A union of the gods. Sinalda, the elf god, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't happen in this one. It gets pretty crazy. In there. Out of here... Ernalda's magic failed. People said the goddess was dead. Taken by Nontria, the undead emperor. Your fields barely produce more grain. Now winds and rain have ceased. The priests throughout the valley can't connect, contact Orlan. Whether your gods are dead, captive, or away fighting chaos, their temples no longer give these normal benefits. Holy people say sacred spots have residual magic, which you can keep alive by continuing to maintain them. Other people think the sacrifices could be spent on better things. They aren't dead. Alright, these require resources to maintain. Now they need us. Keep up the sacrifices. We need to keep up our insight. With the king and queen of the gods dead, tribal unity unraveled. Our tribe mates, the other Baranthali clans, have flouted the king's authority for years, refusing to send worshippers to our temples, to Orlanth and Ernalda, or even pay token tribute. It is time to respond. What did we do? Did we vow to restore the authority of the king? Did we consider it important to make the tribe what it once was? Did we proclaim the days of tribes have ended for good? Did we vow above all to survive, putting talks of kings and tribes behind us? We need the regalia. We vowed above all else to restore the authority. Survival continued to be harder and the tribe continued to fall away. Although you keep sacrificing to Orlanth and Arnaldus season after season, they are all still dead. More gods no longer respond to our sacrifices. Other clans distress our traitors since Isaris is dead. Langhorn Mai no longer answers questions. Much knowledge has been lost as elders die before passing it on. People are worried that this was an expensive decision. Now we get to play. All right. This is a weird timekeeping thing, but it's Everlantho 4. Shrine to Eralda. That's the cow mother, I believe. Asher stock. Ronaldo dead. Hmm. 
Wilds, magic, and pasture. pastures or fields? Fields. Okay. Um, are they actually dead? I don't know. Alright. I think ritual makes things cheaper. Perhaps. We'll do that so we can have more. F oh man, that's this is not good. Let's save the magic. We're gonna need magic. You grant hospitality to a delegation from the Theraling clan, which holds you in relatively high esteem. Once our tribe was a true kingdom, ruled with wisdom and courage by King Beren and his heirs. After King Vinglanth died at the Blood Feast battle, clans gradually stopped obeying royal decrees. Today the Baroneth Theli, the Theli our kingdom in name only. Only by researching the sacred authority of Yor can we reunite and survive. We wish to rally the other Burren clans to the king, the banner of King of Verlanth. Oh, it's because this guy rules. Oh, right, 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 right. Seek his blessing. We should send delegates. Send me, and I'll teach it. Send the king. Holy shit. When the cannibals slew King Vingland, they also killed the willingness of others to follow us. Alright, I mean, dude, if you want to go... Finally, someone's making sense! Uh, sure. Let's send Iverlantho. He, he clearly... Or well, we could send Rita, she's better at this. This is the man. We'll, we'll send her. We'll send a healthy escort. Mood minus. That's not good. Woo -woo -woo. The Theverlings discovered that the clans who once recognized Baron were now reluctant, except in sentimental terms. We had exposed ourselves to ridicule. Raida said we were never going to get them to bow down to a king, but we would have garnered more respect if we had done more to make them love or fear us. Okay. Well, I don't really have a chance to do that. Bad. Oh dear. Okay, let's check out what we got here. Ernalda is the residual spark of magic. Because we can't sacrifice anymore. There's lingering sparks of magic. Okay. So we can. Oh, Sara! She's a. Uh, like, Vinga. Verdalda. Horse. Wait, horse? Baron and Verdalda be. What? Blah? Okay, so this, this might be good. Smite chaos. Because we are fighting chaos. We don't have enough worshippers to support another shrine. Okay, this is this is not good then. This is really bad. We're only worshipping one one god that's still alive. Reduce Sorry, the trading god, no way. Erds plus ten. Invoking the privilege to have context adjudicated by the, th the king, the Tharling and Undialing clans ask Aver Philantho to settle this territory dispute. Rest of the ring can tell that Aver Philantho favors the Tharlings. Fortunately, they also appear to have the stronger claim, the ones who have the most respect for the king. They both brought this, the customary gift. All right, he gets the judge. Mood plus, heck yeah. It was good to have a wise king, people said. There could be no room to complain. He was eloquent. Cool. All right, 
Yeah, now I can. Who the heck is Voryoth? Son of Shepherds. This is the goat guy, I think. Or lambs. Okay, I guess we're up to lambs now. Yermal. I, I say we build a little temple. Smite Chaos. Yeah, here we go. Fire season. Alright, let's check out our map. Where, where there's like a star... Star dancers. Okay. Oh man, we moved far inland. Heck yeah, we got a regular trade set up. All right, spirits. Nice, mood went up. Wolverines. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. That's fucking right. Wolverines will eat your guts. Crickets will chirp at you. Oh, cool. Okay, that's got some food. Contentious divorce of Inkator and Tarasha. And Dialing. Vinkot's law. Wife always returns home with her dowry. In this case, it was worth the traditional ten cows. Fortunately, Inkator claims it was stolen. Just that he or his kin are responsible for returning it. Actually, the king would resolve disputes. Though he would appoint a mediator if there's a conflict of interest.
Draw the remnant magic. Twenty. sense with the god of marriage dead it, it's only natural and yeah we'll return the diary foraging that's great What the fuck is wrong with these people? They eat rocks when they're hungry. No, 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 no. We're not gonna buy food from them. I guess we'll just do it on these guys. Big caravan. Buy food. Sell goods. Go. Cool. Some of your nobles have been plotting a course for the clan. They say this is the pivotal moment. King and Queen of Stormcourt are dead, but our own tribe is also almost dead. The King's heirs died of the Blue Plague. The Valley's clans are increasingly isolated. Many of our temples have fallen into disrepair. But a series of surprisingly good harvests left our food stores in reasonable shape. The treasury has been well managed. You have a brief chance to rebuild a bit, not just hunker down and focus on survival. Sentiment seems to favor reconnecting to the outside world. The world may be ending, but we could at least be part of it until it did. We need to continue the bloodline of the king. You need to find a bride. It's still too soon. People were happy about that. Cool. Caravan. We weren't able to trade at all. What? Brother, I, I, we need to trade. This is not, this is not, maybe we can go across the river since it's freezing. Please buy and sell. Just that. Uh, nobody wants to trade, travel in the dark. Yo, what up, Walona? Not only did you make it to a live, you made it to my first on YouTube live stream. We're playing uh, Six Ages here, which is like Hero Quest Glorantha, which has like. shares roots with Warhammer Fantasy. So we're trying to, uh, the world is ending, the gods are dying, the old ones aren't contacting us, the Skaven and the Lizardmen are leaving. It might, might just be us out here, but we're trying to, uh, survive the end of the world. 
Alright, let's see here. Despite his gruff demeanor and fondness for long solo treks into the wildlands, the enthusiasm has grown among the people for the Hanth the Tracker. Because this is Hanth. People also say that the ring, too often timorous? I'm timorous, am I? I'll show them. Timorous? Timorous? Timorous. Showing nervousness or fear or a lack of confidence. We can't have that. They could use someone as blunt as him to break through the constant back and forth thing. They name Rita as someone who constantly slows the council's delivers. She's the best negotiator. We could make him chieftain. Um. Not as trunculent. They, man, they're really making me pull out the thesaurus today. Hmm. He might, he might be good though, like, in, in a time, we need people who make decisions, not people who have grace. We'll put him on. He kind of wants it. Is this on Steam? This is on Steam, yes. This released, I believe, just last month. There's also a part one. Uh, this is actually the second game in the series, and like in Mass Effect, you can, um... Oh, I can't do it here, I can do it at the main menu, though. Like Mass Effect, you can import your save data from, from your first playthrough into this one, and it'll change, like, how the story goes, I believe, from what I've heard. And I think there's, there's some pretty big changes that you can even have, like... We're in this city called Baronstead and all this stuff, but... Baron can die in... In, in uh in the first game he, he he's like born and grows up throughout the first one steam rating nine out of ten it's it's pretty good it's pretty cool. like this is these are unique and like cool kind of games right you got like your magic that you can do you explore around which we're gonna have to start doing pretty soon here um i wonder if there's still like in the first one, there's this storyline about how, like, like a, a god of humans and a god of the elves are, like, like, they married and they had, like, a child and stuff like that. And, like, it creates this huge religious schism where people are, like, burning each other in cages because of, like, doctrinal differences and stuff like that. But you originally find out, like, over here, and I wonder if that's still a thing. What the heck is going on there? I think we explore that as soon as we can. That's like a freaking meteorite. Alright, um... It's dark season, so there's not much we can do. So we might as well sacrifice. That's what we do. That's what we should do. But what do we sacrifice? Do we have people sick and shit? Sick. A lot of sick. Let's, there you go. That's straightforward. Sacrifice. Store the sick people to health. Merciful Shalana Roy cured all of us sick. Wonderful. Alright. We need Geralda's milk blessing to help feed ourselves. That's true. That's true. We should rebuild what we can. Adequate. Magic is at an adequate level. Oh, this is a uh, storm season, so we we can uh, we can maybe get away with something cheeky here. Let's see here. Is there a wheel clan nearby? Heard raid. Wheel clan. I think these guys are wheels. Those are rams. These are riders. No, 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 no. These none of these are. None of these are the wheels. Ooh, we could fortify, perhaps. Stake perimeter. Resta, a powerful shaman of your clan, says that it's an auspicious time to contact the spirit world. I can gain a significant gift of magic, but there's a chance that this will make it harder for us to successfully bargain with the gods. Your people greatly respect Resta and regard her proposal favorably. 
I'll only allow you to do this if you support me, King. I don't know about that. Uh, contacting the gods. They're all dying. Maybe we can save one of them. But maybe we can't. She's our strongest magician? Troubling popularity. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, so we can't bargain with gods anyway, because the god of bargaining is dead. And people are getting divorced because the god of marriages is dead. Yes. Yes, it is like a story-generating RPG. So, maybe we just start pivoting to the, like, the spirits. Ooh. Yeah, no, okay. I figured it out. I was thinking, what god do we save? If we can only save one... If we can only save one god, I think we should save the god of the horses, because that's what our people are, like, all about. Them and Elmal, I'm thinking. Because Elmal is also a god of the Orlanthi, and maybe if we keep those two, maybe we can, we can rebuild the world once it, like, blows up or whatever. Uh, I'm gonna respectfully refute. That's gonna make people sad. We should, we should get some more dudes. I'm sure I'll get an event to like... Okay, here we go, it's the new year. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Any children born this year? Oh, okay, that's foreshadowing. They're gonna have great destinies. So somebody's gonna be... I just looked at this guy. This dude's like... Had hot water thrown on him or something. That eye does not look right. Okay, our food was doing all right. We'll keep going with the pastures and the, all that. We'll keep that going up. Exploring magic, we're gonna want some of that. Um, and I'm gonna say two fewer. So, so we're we're doing decently there. Um, I think we're gonna get attacked for sure. But let's save the let's save the magic. But we can't do anything in diplomacy. We need we need to get our shit together. That's what we need to do. Maybe maybe we do a, a a ritual. And we go to the gods world and we say like, "Yo, what's going on? Where are the gods at?" Cuz apparently they're all dying. They're not talking to us. We don't know what's going on. Rita, man, this this one. I need to step out of the chamber. Oh. Celebrated for her connection to her ancestor, the horse goddess Rodalda, petitions the ring to undertake a quest. Yes, this is what I was just talking about. The divine vision tells her about that slipping through a hole in the world. She can ride Charandar, legendary mount of your first king. She wishes to take a small escort of stout soldiers with her on this admittedly dangerous mission. Her, oh, that red, that red enter. Dude, what is with you, man? Holes in the world grow more numerous every year. You can never be sure of what's on the other side or if you can even get back. What? Admittedly dangerous means unbelievably dangerous. You know what? We we gotta we gotta throw things at and see what sticks. Take take a, a decent escort there. Ten dudes. Could be a season or more until they return. The Kurandiri are spreading stories about how th those are wheels. I know they are. People in the Griffin Clan are eating babies. I myself don't believe this though. Right. Oh, I haven't had a chance to make him the ring member. Are you joking me? Just stop with that. Cut that out. Can't. We did say we. I want to see what happens when we do anyway. Jared. Let's get rid of Jared. He's just a goat guy, anyways. Hans. Where you at? There we go. He's renowned with food. Okay, we were gonna do something here. I believe... Okay. Reduced. Hope for the best. Food is low. Perenna. 
a fearsome warrior of our plan, so she intends to hunt and slay Ingarth, chieftain of the nearby Indyling clan. In a vision with her god, who macked Death Dealer, they accused Ingarth of speaking to the dead, not in the ordinary way one contacts the spirits of one's ancestors, but by digging around in the barrow mounds to gain the secrets of talking skulls. Perenna does not seek permission. She is simply telling you where she's headed through the next few days. Huh. Not the normal way you talk to dead people. No, no, no. They're doing it the weird way. This is like a world where you can, like, sue ghosts and stuff, so... Oh yeah, people are happy. And Humact actually responded. She cleaved him and dead. Killed him. Um, if I remember correctly, you can either just give them trade goods. Like, they, they, uh, or sorry, they, so when you sue a ghost, they don't pay you, they just leave. Alternatively, if you fail in suing a ghost, I think you have to sacrifice, like, cows or goods, like, trade goods to them. Very bizarre. Wherever I go, there I am. Thank you. That's true. Uh, so yeah, that, that seems pretty good. We, we, uh, we killed the guy. Wait, no, that's bad. They're gonna be mad at us. Ah, uh, he was... He was, like, digging up skulls anyway. Big rainstorm. Hitting Baronstead. Weeks of rainfall have turned the world mud. When the rain hits the skin, it leaves behind a burning rash. Oh, cool, acid rain. This is how the world dies, says Varmeth. Not with fire, not with earthquakes, but drowned like a rat. Oh, God. Man, this, this, this end of the world is really seriously, like, bumming me out. <laughs> um. All right, yeah, you're pretty, that's, that's so depressing. All right. We could defy the rain with a kite flying contest and somebody could get zapped by lightning. I, I kind of want to do that. The world is doomed. We must face this bravely. Our whole thing's about insight, though. We're all going to die in shame and terror. Bravery. This guy's just red. Oh, he's a Humact worshiper. That's why. He's just ready to kill. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it, it's got heavy, like... Zombie ghosts leave this place sort of vibes. Um, let's see here. Let's defy it. Wait a minute, what did he say? That doesn't mean they're a good idea now, though. What does the king say? Oh no. Once had a rain god named Heller. I don't know about that one. So you play as riders in this one and in the previous one. But these are spiritual successor, a labor of love. To a game from the 90s called King of Dragon Pass. Which is set in the same world. But you play as the uh, the Orlanthes. As, as the Rams, as it were. But the, the, the people call themselves. Uh, because I believe the Storm God symbol is like a swirl. And that's like kind of like a ram's horns, right? But, uh... Never heard of that guy. Let's do nothing. The ring saw no reason to act. And eventually the rain stopped. The people knew another problem would come along soon to make them forget all about it. That's the thing in these games. Sometimes... 
Like, these aren't matters for, like, the council to deal with. What the hell is that big... Is that Abraham Lincoln? Bigfoot? Santa? Saradin, a carpenter of your clan, has of late gained a following among the youth. They watch his deft hands as he coaxes even twisted Twimber, Twimber, Timber, available today to his will. As he works, he speaks in hushed tones of wisdom and bravery. Typical Erlanthi consider boasting a virtue, but Sarandin never makes claims for himself. He asks for nothing, but his admirers say he should be elevated to the... Why everybody, like, everybody is like, ooh, ooh, this guy, like, and he does a thing kind of cool. Um, this is ridiculous. Maybe he can join next time there's a vacancy. Oh, okay, yeah, these are empty words. We're gonna keep having problems with his disciples, great. That's just wonderful. We need more warriors. We need food. We need food bad. Please. Somebody. Anybody. I need food. Oh, the, the wheels have arrived. Oh, that reminds me. After we get this food, we need to... Explore that crater. After a period of negotiations, the Tharlings have agreed to provide a bride for King Everlantho, who lacks an heir. Yathanda, a woman celebrated by all for her robust health, enters into the arrangement willingly. Right on. Uh, despite the gap in age between her and her husband, uh, <clears throat> her can expect the traditional bride price. Of 20 cows. I didn't say anything. And have brought a dowry of similar value. Twice widowed, I embrace this new queen with joy, yet also melancholy. Dude, this sad guy. He's had two wives die, never had an, an heir, I guess. What did he say? Gladdens our hearts to see you marry again. Dude, our, our council's like off doing cr random crap. What's Hans say? Joint blessing. Uh eh, can do reciprocal. Oh, give them excess. Twenty cows. What do we add to the twenty cows? Ten cows. Yeah, marriage. Caravan is back from the Sky Racers. We got less than a month of food for 73 goods worth. Are you joking me? That is terrible. We need to we need to search our own land. Several while okay. Kill as many as possible. This old lady's like renowned at fighting. A storm bull rule party. W war party arrives to make an offer delivered in their usual intemperate fashion. You idiots have allowed chaos to increase its power in your so-called kingdom. We will stop a hot wind ceremony to blow away all your stenches. In exchange, you will give us goods worth 30 cows and a negotiation. Shut up, you dude. This guy's gonna ruin everything. He's like the the most incompetent. Like, no wonder the end times are happening. This guy is like, oh, respect my authority, please. I am king. Please. This is Urox. He's, he fights chaos. You know, the thing kind of killing the world. This is These are his worshippers. Oh, that's cool. You've got Homokt. I think that's Elmok because of the flaming spear. That's Orlanth. And then that must... I think that's Dostal, actually, the hunter. Neat. 
I mean, that's cool to see, like, engravings of them. And then you've got the, uh, Amigara fault holes over here. Yeah, we'll agree. Sure is their word, they bellowed and a hot wind blew to purify our lands of chaos's rancid spoor. Only the merest devil power remained. Walk both is everywhere these days, they explained, but now he is less here than most other places. This, this news brought relief to the people who expressed gratitude towards the Uroxy. See, we maybe did something there, I think. Wait, why is this black? Is that just a void in the world? That could be, that could be interesting. Let's see if we can explore our land. It's Karenna! We killed that guy. Ooh, a drop of bright amber. It's magical. We got magic. That was good. You know, that's... What else do you find? Oh, fuck. I'm back from the crater formed. Back in our rider days when part of the sky... Oh my goodness. I think I remember this. Like the sky literally starts falling in the first game. We climbed down the crater and dug around, finding a wicker box, imprisoning a duck spirit. It said, if you find the witch who did me to this, I will happily ally with you. Questioning it further, we realized that the witch must have lived centuries and died centuries ago. The spirit did not exactly understand this, but finally agreed to come home with us. Then green fumes issued from the holes we dug. Reeking of primal chaos, they furled into our lungs, choking us. One of us died on the spot. The rest remained desperately short of breath. The spirit alliance we gained. That duck spirit should be better than be good. Oh god. Oh god. Nurgle? Illness has swept through the clan. One in ten has fallen prey to a sickness that causes delirium. Alright, I can't stop eating these dried kiwis. Hold on. Okay. Lore speakers say that the disease has grown tighter and stronger as chaos tightens its grip on the world. Some people say that propitating Malia, goddess of pestilence, would persuade her to free us from the disease. Others call us a fool's bargain at best and a terrible crime at worst. You can propitate Malia in, in King of Dragon Pass. You can do a lot of really bad idea stuff in King of Dragon Pass. That one's crazy. They kind of toned it down a little, I feel like, for uh, six ages. Shalana's still alive. Let's call her. Let's let's bring the cows out. 20 cows. And 15 goods. She ended the epidemic. Let's go. God power. No venture this year. New hunting ground. Convert pastures to fields. Sweet, we got valuable gems. Okay, we need to call on the spirits next year. A lot of spirits. Shining Blossom Delegation and Vardius the Swift ask you to send warriors to help them raid the Griffin clan. The Griffins have a lot. The Griffins have a large herd. You've incurred... I, I don't want to make a family joke, guy joke. You incurred obligation to us a while back, and this is a good opportunity to pay it back. He's expecting a dozen... So we don't have that much. And a token for us. Alright. Let's see. Build a shrine to Rodalda. I agree with that. Wilds 2. Flooring 1. Ritual 1. Anth. Let's gain a new blessing from Dostal. Track more game to the wildlands. For as long as I live, beasts will abandon the forest and come here. We'll gain at their expense. They are doomed anyway. Someone has to starve and it shouldn't be us. You can't debate morality if you've starved to death.
I mean, this guy really is like... You know what? Do it. Let's just dance powder this stuff. Uh... Oh no, they might find out. Hail rides. Oh, she came back! She slipped through the world. We got a treasure. She, she rode. Let's see. My mission to slip through the hole in the world and ride alongside the magical stallion Shirendar was a success. Shirendar sent me one of his children back to the present with me. The steed, son of Shirendar, will strengthen my sword hand. This magnificent golden horse will also give me Rodaldo's clever gift of politicking. After I die, my descendants will gain the same benefit while riding it. Neat. I have wonderful news about Krenna. Due to her many hours of sparring and practice, sincere offerings to Asara, who macked and other gods of war, Krenna's ability at arms must now be ranked on par with the heroes of legend. Our oldest ancestors, who fought at Elmal's side at the Battle of Akashar, consider her their worthy heir. Cool. Cool. It was a tremendous storm to the north. Oh, also, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, who that this applies to. Uh, there was a tremendous storm to the north. Drops of grease fell for weeks, doing no one any good. Gross? Very gross. Already doing that one. I say we exp uh... I guess we can ex to share the exploration. Oh, we need to do the spirits. Itinerant trader brings a gift of vessels, gear, gold, torques. Ooh. What? Why is she dressed like that? What the hell? Does she have? She's got like a, a jiggy from Banjo Kazooie. Or autism. <laughs> what do we got here? We got like a dude dressed up literally like freaking um static shock over here. Alright, let's see. The Valley Surviving Clans all contributed to just give us a gift. Oh man. Inspiring announcement from the ring. Finally, we have a chance of coming back, people said. Alright. Um. I think. This area no longer exists. It's a literal hole in the world. Okay, that's. That is. That is bad. That is not good. That is bad. No! Spirits brings in food. What does duck do? Helps deal with marriages. Helps world over blooded people. Improves crop yield. Boar. Okay, yeah, we need to we need to do berry and earthworm. Got food. I'm proud. Oh, this is the auspicious kid or whatever. Sarah Stev. That must be the uh, the guy. Longer effect. Seven year. Should be getting more food now. Delegation of Outlanders gives us a blessing from an unfamiliar Earth Goddess. Change for 20... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The fuck is this thing? What is this? Look at that face. Holy shit. Oh, I thought I thought her hand outlines were like little scraggly hairs coming off the back of his like neck there. Truly horrifying.
We cannot have presence satisfy Belurga's hunger. If you help us, we will grant a renewing burst of fertility. Unlike Arnaldo, our girth goddess lives still. Who are these outlanders? That's an axe. The plants grew afraid. Belurga's blessing had awakened a hunger in the earth. I know who this is. I know who Belurga is. Uh, Marin Gur. She's like the dinosaur god. Maybe we'll get dinosaurs. That would be cool, right? Shrine to Shalana. The king and his recent bride, Yathanda, announced the birth of their son, Veneth. Night! The barren line of kings once again has a male heir. His laxants of Earthos' sons from his first marriage were killed by fighting bandits. Look at my boy! He will grow up strong of mind and sure of thought. When I am gone, he will lead the Baron Telly to glories untold since riders and rams met and became one. God talkers say that this suspicious event has increased our clan magic. More at 11. Uh, let's see, what should we do? Celebrate the renewal. Celebrate the renewal. Heck yeah. What? He would never be a true king the way Baron? Ooh. That's mean. That's mean. But we got a ton sick, huh? Balorgan blessing. What does that mean? We don't know. We just we we have no way of knowing. Ding sure ain't good. Yeah, we're no longer worshipping him. What does our ancestors do? Oh! Fight fiercely. Might be worth it to do that, but we were told to do a shrine of Redalda, which I think we should do. Because she's still alive. It does kind of seem like, uh... What's their face is dead. Thirty of our sick here. People clamor for Dresta. She needs all of her time to. Oh god. Yeah, I have a feeling. What is the background of the run? Uh, there's not too much. I just started not too long ago, about maybe an hour, maybe 40 minutes. Basically, uh, so far, we're just kind of cloistering up. We're building our power up. I'm kind of just reacting to all the shit that's uh, not going our way. All the stuff, rather. And uh, we're, we're like a very fierce clan. So we'll be really good at war once it comes to that. And um, the game tells us, you know, the, the world is going to end, but we might be able to survive it and build a new world if we make the right choices. And there's apparently a bunch of ways we can do that. All right, let's see here. There's one I think that should help us travel better. And Nilla might really be... A good one. Same with Humax. Yeah, we, we don't have enough for more. We can't support more trade routes, but we need what we need is we need more 
stuff from our land. Oh no. She had an omen of just seeing this, uh, of the whole town burning. It's creepy. Dude, we're not finding nothing for nothing. Solar Worshippers, Rite of Elmal. We'll do the Solar Rite now and the Storm Rite next season. We'll do 30 goods worth. 10 cows. Yes. Elmal's light shone. Cl we did it. It went down through the poison clouds. We've got the sun back. Solar blessing. Ritual time. Separates the living from the dead. Helps us fight. Maybe helps us fight. Sorrow the woman inspires women to take up arms or strengthen the quester. I mean, could 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 be needed, especially with the world ending. We're gonna need everybody. Not to mention, I mean, look at Karenna. She's like the strongest person in our entire tribe. Let's see here. I think Humak. Let's go with the Death God. We're gonna exalt him. Amid the tumult of the gods' war, Voti of Humak is usually best suited for this ritual. Oh, we can send Karenna! Karenna. Many recalled how Humak had blessed her after she killed Ingar, the Skullchan's hit chief. What is she, uh... Fill our sword arms with death. Keep the undead at bay. Fill our sword arms with death. 25. 20. Karana meditated. Oh, okay, we're good. Karenna meditated on her blade and rode towards the clamor of death. Looking down at her sword, she saw that it was bloodied. But the warrior of the Griffin clan lay dead at her feet. This clan holds you in high esteem. A life clan, she is able to find a step into a timeless time. Perceives the cosmic mountain on which stands the primal war god, Argon Tor. How does Karenna petition the battle god for the right to be trained? Crap, I should have read this. You can actually read these and it helps a little bit. We're pretty tradition, but I don't know if that's... Don't ask permission, fight. I think that. Long after Humak's brothers had given up, trying to fought Kargantor 100 times, at the end of this, Humak knew how to fight. Karana asked Kargan Tor what more she can do, now that she knows how to fight. Go to the Gate of Introspection, says the Sentinel of the Cosmic Mountain. Karana encountered many false trails along the way. After finding the gate, she sits in contemplation of it for a year. I guess I should stop right now and kind of explain what the hell's going on here. So, according to, like, Bronze Age tribes um, of various, various peoples... Um, in doing various rituals or wearing certain like skins of certain animals or spinning around or having music played or all of these things or you know with smoke and all this stuff the actor the main performer in the ritual uh, is thought to go spiritually to another world and in this game you are literally going into like the fucking cosmos pop you're spinning with the boys, drinking the wine, you're wearing the mask. You go, you go to the, the gods' realm. 
But that's what we're doing here. All right, so, uh, finding the gate, contemplation for a year. Not a mortal year, but an instant and eternity all at once. Oh my god, it's like that episode of Deep Space Nine, where O'Brien, like, is, lives a 100-year jail sentence and, like, kills his co-cellmate, imaginary one, in it and, like, goes insane and almost beats his wife. Jeez, dude. That's dark. All right, so, what lesson do we learn from this meditation? The secret of no secret. The secret of insight. I think that one... The choice swept through the entire clan, granting us... Blank. Understanding and perception. The contemplation felt like a year and aged kind of like ten. She would forever after feel like a tantalizing truth lay just beyond grasping. On his way back from the gate, Humak encounters Yermal the trickster, who has discovered death in the form of his sword. The God's War swirls and twists, overlapping but contradictory versions of the same event beckon for Karenna's attention. Which incompatible truth does she move towards? Humak slays the, the grandfather, the mortal. That's this. This has got to be your mall, I think. That's God. That's grandfather mortal. This is Vumax, I think. Hmm. Vumax slays him. Took the sword and did what he had to be done in order to bring death into the world. Grandfather mortal became the essential sacrifice. Rena had found the unpopular and fearsome truth and had not shirked from it. Other Orlanth clans would tremble when they thought of us. The power of death settled into Karenna. We would have good luck the next time we raided. Karenna remains behind as Humak has home with the sword. He knows that Orlanth will soon take the sword and use it to kill the sun. In Humak's next action, he severs his ties to Orlanth's tribe. If Karenna joins this incident, the cohesion and harmony of your clan would suffer, but we would gain considerable magic we'll move ahead finding him later in the story we'll just press right on the remote a couple times Karenna who has become one with Huma holds a broken sword Orlanth broke it to bits by striking it against the sun Humax gathers up the shattered pieces finds some of them in the possession of a coalescing darkness spirit named Zorak Zoran Zorak from Space Ghost Coast to coast? Karenna knows this is the troll death god in the process of becoming, though not yet wreathed in flames. Zorak Zoran already wields a big shard of the sword. Every inch of him screams danger. Attack immediately. Ooh, gathering more pieces. You win this one, brother, says the troll god. Our god talkers predict a good fortune against trolls for the next 60 years. Hell yeah. Humak draws the line between life and death with his sword. It seems hero quests do more than one thing in this one, which I like. Cutting a vast chasm that drops them into hell. That's kind of cool. That's kind of fucking crazy. Uh... Wow. Wow. How does is Karenna assistant sending the undead to hell? By welcoming death. No. By sweeping aside a skeleton horde. Humak praised Karenna's support as tactically essential. Class my reward as rightly as tightly as you would clasp your sword. The Death Dealer said. In a journey, both fast and slow, Karenna traveled back from the edge of Humak's chasm back to Berenstead. Oh no, I gotta sneak! <laughs> Damn it. I couldn't mute in time. I apologize. We, 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 we came home. We earned the war blessing. We saw it. Oh my god, she actually did age like 10 years. Look at her. Holy shit. She does not look good. Verlantho, who serves as chieftain of our clan, is also 
the hereditary king of our tribe. He's been musing. Our recent setbacks have one dire explanation. No other clans accept a king. Only by uniting one crown can we go together. All right, we're gonna we're gonna study where those regalias are. Thank you. Members of the Griffin Clan arrive to demand redress for the warrior Karena killed on the way to the Gods War. Goods worth twenty cows, dude. I'm running out of money and cows. There we go. No need to give them an extra gift. We're fine. Damn, look at all of that. Power of death, all this other shit. Twenty and twenty, I guess. All right, where's the war? Oh God! The fissure opened up and ate up our uh, exploring party, but they're mostly all right. Still pretty crazy. Kill the spiriting downpour for weeks on end. It's not crop season, but the people uh, look for an explanation. Chaotic Storm God. What are you going to do about it? We'll suppress chaos. We hate chaos. No, our shrine of Arox has fallen. There's royalists and uh, realists. Survival matters more. We should just all get along. That's right, Hanth. Um... We'll get food. We need food. Sleep, not dead. Sweet, their neighbors never found out that we used that magic. 
Warfin has just gained support to dismantle the, the Get Gods. We just got something from Arnaldo. What are you talking about? The absent gods are not going to return. Dismantle all of them. We're now optimistic. Look at that. Huh. The ghost of one of our rider ancestors appear. Lodges the claim against the clan. He's suing us. We're getting sued by a ghost. Berendar was buried shortly before the completion of Baron's dead. Pig dug up and bear damaged his remains. Oh, shit. By the laws of high lore, I am owned the compensation worth ten cows. Turns to Rita and says, I expected my children to properly protect the dead. After the marriage, Baron Rodalda combined the legal codes of the people to work into a new law that would work well for the tribes as well as clans. Ferendar's claim hasn't been made since your clan moved to Baronstead. Try the case. Try the case. I think try the case. We'll hear the case. Under High Lords, anyone harming a burial must pay a fine. High Lords Law. We don't worship High Lord anymore. You are a zombie ghost. Leave this place. You are just a ghost. That is nonsense. You wouldn't have put a trial in the first place. That's true. Ah, damn it. We lost to a ghost. Okay, more places are uh, not doing good. Spent several seasons searching for chaos. A walktopus let out an inky black cloud and tried to escape. But Coretta charged unerringly through the cloud and struck it down. Ooh. Kill it. Um. We can't do that. Sorry, now is not a good time. What can I? What can I do here? been raided. That's pretty crazy. You know what we could do? Explore here. And explore down there. 
The Horn of Vingat, the Mantle of Redalda, and the Crown of Beren were taken into battle. When he died fighting the cannibal army, these treasures were lost. Studying the carving made to commemorate the Willful Blood Feast battle, they believe to have estimated its location somewhere to the northeast. This would be a good first place to look for the lost regalia pieces. Neat. To the northeast. Let's do Orglandi. He's renowned in combat. Send a bunch of people. Most people didn't care. While Karenna is exploring the Autumn Mountains west of Baron said white furry snakes approach her. This beautiful mountain, once covered in the finest ice, suitable to the upbringing of our children and easy to slither on, burns with the heat that is not heat, but rather the dissolving corruption of primal chaos. Help us and gain a blessing as entrancing as it is pliable. Hmm. Ice snakes menaced my ancestors. Now die. No. Uh. Oh no. Well, those snakes are gonna get extinct. Oh my god, pumpkin bears. In the Orlanthi Kingdom of Forza and Tyrian and explorers find a devastated landscape dotted with depopulated clan territories and shattered settlements. They travel for days without spotting any other humans in places where the world appears to be coming apart completely. One day they spy a giant, a small band of forest suli beset by chaos creatures called jackal bears. We'll use magic. Hole in the roof. Loosing a dagger of tooth from the region's legendary tower, Tooth of Horosan. Aided in battle. Oh, cool. The treasure of each of the southern kingdoms gained a diplomacy blessing as long as we kept him cool. I guess. I think that works. Oh no. We gotta mediate. Oh man. People side with the king. Said we'd curb chaos, and we did. Promises made, promises catch, kept, caught.
Neat. Great elk. Beaks. I come as emissary from the creatures of the wild. If you forgo hunting for two years, the next four years will be super fruitful. Hmm. Cool. Our magic is increasing. Quicksilvers. Well, it's kind of late, and I'm kind of tired. Good night, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it here. Have a good. Oh, and I 